first of all, thanks for being with Planet Rum. We are in uh, Rome, Italy. Mm -hmm. um, it's great to be here. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, just start from the beginning. Uh, I know that your, grand uh, your father wanted to be a drummer, mm -hmm. but uh, your grandpa didn't uh, let him. So when you uh, showed interest in uh, music and drumming, your father did really didn't help you. So how did you get involved? Did you I just started growing up. I was listening to records, you know. Uh, I think like different, different, different rock and roll records, or even like I think you know, like Bill Haley and the Comets and Frankie Lyman, early, early vinyl that I heard, and I just loved the drumming. And uh, and then Kiss, you know, Peter Chris and Kiss came along, and I just got really, you know, uh, gravitated towards that, and got started to pretend to play, you know, practice with the neighbors and pretended to play along with the records, and then started eventually someone bought a guitar and and I started playing very young and and um, I think my dad yeah bought me a drum set of Ludwig 1964 blue sparkle First experience with Ludwig. yeah at a very young age I remember before that I had he bought me a snare drum and a stand and a cymbal in a stand just to start and I remember I was really in a cheap trick like Bunny Carlos mm -hmm. was a huge fan of Bunny Carlos about 1977 78 so I was young very young and I love that he had Ludwig drums, and I love the Ludwig catalog from that year, like 79, uh, 78, like that classic Ludwig catalog. And I remember dropping something and looking down and seeing on the little baby stand, it said Ludwig. Yeah. And I remember running out down the stairs to show my dad I had a piece of Ludwig gear because Bunny Carlos played it. And, and now Bunny is one of my, you know, idols, but also a friend of mine. And, and on YouTube, you can see him giving me a tour of his, his drum collection. So talk about really crazy yeah. full circle yeah it's kind of cool I moved to LA. I had moved, I'd gone to college in Texas, University of North Texas. I went to college in Miami for grad school, University of Miami. And then from there, I got a gig in Boston. I moved to Boston and played with a couple different bands. And um, one of them was a band called Jack Drag. And we recorded a record in, at a famous studio called Sunset Sound in Los Angeles. And when I made the record out there, I finished early and I had a car and I just drove around while they finished the record because the drums are first. And I realized pretty quickly from hanging out there in the late 90s that this is where I, you need to be if you wanted to, if I wanted to live the dream, you know, of playing music on a higher level. And, um, you know, that was, uh, I moved out there, I didn't know anybody. At least I didn't think I knew anybody. It turned out I knew all the people who I went to college with were out there. And once I met one, they were all there and we met. But otherwise, I moved out there. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a car. I didn't know anybody. I was sleeping on a couch of a friend I barely knew. So it was a very, uh, I just said, I'm going to go out there and give it a try. And then slowly, I got a job teaching at the LA Music Academy, like within a week, uh, with Ralph Humphrey and Joe Picaro. Uh, and taught there for a couple of years. And I just you know, started playing with this band or that band. And next thing you know, I, um, I started playing in town, gigging more. And that's how it started. And then eventually, I got started touring, which was my main goal, and we've been, I've been touring for the last 15 years, pretty much, so.
Yeah. <laughs> that you study jazz, marimba, percussion, and that you can sight read for big bands. Yeah. So, for rock drummers, uh, that think that only hitting hard is the most important thing. Can you tell them that studying is... Oh well, yeah, I, like, I like I just did a clinic here, you know, at the Bedriga Festival, and, and, um, and I basically, you know, it was... Um, the point of my clinics and, and I try to show is the big picture is that I studied all these different mediums and hopefully, you know, any young drummer will understand that once they see the clinic that I could have played jazz, I could have played rock, I could have played fusion, I could have played any style of music. It just happened to be that I chose, you know, I, I chose rock, I went that direction, but I, I think all those influences from brushes, from jazz, from traditional jazz, playing very quietly to drumline marching band, from studying tune percussion like marimba all those things i think helped improve my playing as a as a rock drummer i think that all helped me you know in the big picture yeah and it's important to be able to play very very quietly and it's important to be able to play very strong and very loud and you have to be able to uh, di yeah diversify like i talk about in the clinic and then you know if you practice both those things then you can work more and play more and it's more enjoyable and you can have a career so and you can get gigs, important gigs like uh, Marilyn Manson. How did you get these gigs? You know, I was playing with Foreigner, and one of the tour managers was a tour manager uh, for Manson. And she told me that she worked with Manson in the past, so I told her, hey, if that gig ever opens up, let me know. And she said, well, he always uses people who are on the inside, so it probably won't, but I just said, keep me in mind. And um, a few years later, I, uh, before that, I had done a tour with a guitarist and he was playing in a band called Ashes Divide at the time with Billy Howardale from Perfect Circle. And he, years later, got the gig playing bass with Marilyn Manson. I said, hey, if that gig ever opens up, just telling people, hey, I'm available, I'd be interested in doing that. Because I always wanted to cover the metal side. I wanted to have that extreme so I could kind of have a little of everything from jazz to you know wide range and i'm still trying to play many different styles i haven't played yet you know i'm still diversifying because it's fun and i think it'll make me a better player and ultimately when the gig uh, opened up they had we were using a drummer who was producing the record he decided he didn't want to work with manson anymore midway through and i got a call from both the guitarists who had worked with manson before and the tour manager and one day both called me and said hey you know, he's looking and they both put my name in. And so I got a call from his manager, Tony, at the time. And uh, and that's how it started. And then, you know, basically started talking about it a little bit. And uh, within a couple of days, I got a call at the last minute. So come on in tonight, we'll audition, learn these songs. I had to, it was very fast. So and that's that's how it happened. Yeah. Uh, like I said, there's so many styles I haven't played from country music or, you know, dance music, pop, a lot of styles that I haven't done. It's like, that's exciting. It's fun. The idea of maybe taking on a challenge of playing some other kind of music that maybe I haven't really, that I don't feel like I've conquered yet or really gone out and toured with and really um, internalized, you know, and um, so to me, it's always fun to keep growing. You know, like I said, I played jazz early on. I'm actually recording with a jazz trio in Texas that I've been playing with um, that are faculty at uh, UTEP, University of Texas, El Paso. I did a recital with them last year. And from there, we've branched out and we're starting to play some more. So I'm excited to get into that side of my playing too, because although people maybe know I play jazz and I demonstrate brushes, they maybe haven't heard me really play. And so for me, that would be fun because it's a really great trio. It could be a whole new outlet. So I think it's just healthy and it's, it's healthy for me to do a lot of different things. But also I do a lot of things other than play drums, which keeps playing drums fresh. Like I'm, I'm interested in you know, collecting art and, and, and dealing in artwork and that's exciting to me. And uh, so many different things are interesting, you know? Uh, so uh, I think it's good to kind of get away from drums and then come back and it keeps it fresh. You, know? you have to live. Always, 
always moving. Absolutely. Like tomorrow, I'm going to go to the, uh, you know, the Sistine Chapel and be inspired by our work. And that is inspiring because I think that makes you a better player. And some of my best friends who are great drummers are also inspired by art and how it inspires them. And I think just living life, I think you have to live life in order to kind of really have something to say. And I think the more you live life, the more I think it'll make your make drumming stay interesting, you know? And so you're not just playing the same thing over and you're uninspired, you know? Yeah, I mean, I used Pisces all through high school. I actually grew up in upstate New York, so I had to work it out. I couldn't get Pisces where I lived, so I had to work it out where I would, from a music store in Michigan, I could buy Pisces symbols, and if I didn't like them, I could send them back to try different models. They'd have a, maybe a deal. So when I was a little kid, I would go on a paper route and deliver newspapers in America to get money so I could buy Pisces symbols. And uh, so I grew up playing Pisces. I loved them. When I got to college, I started playing darker, like old K Zildjian's. But then when I started playing more pop, you know, I realized, wow, I'm missing that sound. And uh, I went back to Pisces, and I've been with them since basically my whole rock career, you know. When I moved out to L.A., it's just this, you can't replace, I feel like there's an organic feel and connection to me from the ride in a hi-hat, which is the most, I think, emotional, you know, uh, I think most personality in a player will come out in those two instruments. And, and they have so many different lines and so many different models. And every model from a big outdoor festival, I'll use the Alpha, which is loud and, and slightly inexpensive, but the Rock Crash, 20-inch Rock Crash or 19 or the Rock Hats, from Manson worked better than, say, the expensive 2002s, you know, even though 2002s worked perfect with Foreigner. Right now I'm playing the 602 Classics, which I absolutely love. I use them in Japan with Tak Matsumoto, and I use them all over on his new record, The Voyage. And um, to me, there are so many different sounds, you know, from the new PSC, um, you know, uh, little little stack, you know, the 14 inch stack, which is super inspiring, and that just came out. They're always inventing. And there's, and then also for the jazz recording, I'm going to use the Masters, Dark Ride 22 and the, the Crash Ride 20. Those two together are beautifully complemented and sound as good as any of my old Ks that I've collected. You know, they've really nailed it. So they have, they cover all the ground from the most brightest, beautiful 2002 602 for rock and pop to the Dark Masters. And then there's the Rude. And, you know, there's something for everyone. The Alpha, um, I just think they, they nail it. I've been to the factory three times, luckily, from touring Europe and watching them make symbols. No one made, I've been to other symbol factories and seen how they've done it. Yeah, and beautiful. no one does it the way they do. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, not Nottville. Gorgeous. I'm Swiss, so it's fun. Yeah, and my name actually comes from a valley right near there. So yeah, it's, it's great. And Kelly Pisces and Eric Pisces are like family, you know, so it's just, uh, it's very, they're very inspired. Yeah, I mean, I use Pisces all through. you know what wear earplugs no um you know uh yeah protect your ears yeah you know you got to be careful luckily now in-ears can do it you know i wish i had in-ears when i was younger so invest in in-ears if you're young you know get something that you can practice to to protect your ears that's true and otherwise i just say practice and you know don't be afraid to commit to it and and really you know you have to put in the time but i'm a living proof you know from when i was a little kid i dreamt of touring the world and getting to, you know, play with a bunch of different artists. It's, and I've done exactly what I wanted to do, you know, and to be here in Rome and get to hang out tomorrow on a day off. And the day before I was in Berlin, the day before I was in Poland and Sweden. Now I'm heading from here to France. It's like a dream come true. And that's all just from playing drums and doing drum clinics now. So I've, you know, I've been able to turn it into a career and buy houses and, you know, it's exciting and, and it's inspiring. So I would just like to say, you know, follow your, dreams practice hard and um and if it could happen to me it could happen to you so yeah have fun playing drums and thanks planet drum for having me
Thank you. Ciao.